Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a good day. Welcome back. Today's episode, we're going to be talking and making an enemy turret. This will be the first uh, step in the process of it. We're just going to focus on more of the attack, and then we can focus more on like the aesthetics of it next. Uh, so if you like today's video, please like it. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, comments, anything, just... Uh, comment it down below and let's just jump right into it so we're going to be making a an enemy and this one's going to be a turret so we're going to have to do a static body and we've uh, made something like this before and we already know what should go on it we're going to do a sprite and this is going to be our uh, base so, boom, zoom in here. This is what he looks like right now. And then we got to add in our um, collision shape 2D. And I'm going to actually do a circle on this one. It's about a circle, I think. All right, we got pixel snapping. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I don't really care about this extra space up top because the turret will be attached to a, a block. <clears throat> it will be attached to a block on all uh, on this side, so I don't really care about this part sticking out. I more just care about the part where you actually see the sprite. And now we're gonna do our interesting part, and this is we're gonna add a child uh, called a line two D. Uh, I use line 2Ds to help me make sure that um, uh, like whatever is shooting a projectile uh, sh is shooting in the correct direction that I want. So I use line, I personally use line 2Ds. You don't have to use line 2Ds, but that's why I personally use them. And we're just going to go with one... Um, Yes, let's just go on. There we go. And that is right there, our line. Oh, crap. And that is our line 2D. Now we're going to add some more children of it. And this is going to be a position 2D node. Um, let's save that. Let's actually just do the sprite first before we get the position 2D node. Let's just get the sprite. So this is the turret pipe. And we gotta move this fella down. Now, he's not gonna be like this right here. He's not gonna be right there because when he goes and turns, I don't want, uh, I want this uh, line here. Let me show you. Uh, yes, when he goes to turn, He's going to be turning right there. I do not want that. I do not want that. So what we got to go do is we actually have to go to offset. Bring this bad boy back up. And offset his Y to 8. Yes, there we go. Now that his offset's at 8. You see the point that he's going to turn at is right there at the top instead of at the middle. So now we're going to rotate. And you see how he's rotating right at the center. That's what I want. But you can see that the turret head will be clipped into uh, the block uh, that the turret is attached to. And I do not want that. So what I'm going to do is make this just 90 degrees. And we got to offset him maybe 10 pixels. Wait, wait, wait. That's not it. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's... Is it, though? Oh, wait, wait. No, 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 no. No, no, I want to offset that by 8, but I want to bring his position. Uh, let's just do 2 pixels. Yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. And that's exactly what I want right there. So as we go and rotate, 
he's gonna be rotating, but as soon as he hits the the um, the block that he's on, he it's gonna be flat, and that's exactly what I want. That is perfect. That is perfect. Now just reset it, and um, and I'll be uh, right back. Sorry about that. Uh, my computer is dying, so let's just uh, get right back into it. Now that we have our line 2D, we can also we also have now our sprite of it. And now let's get our last thing that we're gonna need for uh, this uh, set this children for the line, which is gonna be position 2D node. Now I'm using a position 2D node so I can actually place where I want the bullet to be at. So we're gonna place this position 2D on uh, your line on your sprite. And it's going to be rotating with the line 2D. Like all three of these, line 2D, sprite, and position, are going to rotate together. And so wherever you place this position now, it's going to rotate as well. And this is where you're going to want the bullet to be at. So wherever you want the projectile to start at, that's where it's going to be at. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I am. Is that it right there? Yep. So we're just going to drag this down right to there so right there that's exactly where the bullet is going to come and appear and then it's going to fire in that direction and that's exactly what i want so we're going to go to line 2d and we're just going to rotate this thing around and that's exactly what we want right there is for the line 2d to rotate around that center point the turn uh, i keep forgetting what it's called but that green thing to rotate just a little bit off to where it's lined up. I guess not. Ah. Okay, well, I see what I have done. Alright. So I had the position of the screen on two. I now figured out that this line 2D has to be that. But... We'll, we'll mess with this later. Yeah, we'll, we'll mess with this later. That's fine for now. And the uh, position 2D will also rotate around with it as well. But we are not done yet, so we're going to save the scene. Uh, go to enemy, turn, save the scene. All right, now we're going to need a new scene. And this one is going to be... An area 2D node. This one's going to be a very interesting one. Let's call it detect radius. Good. And then an area 2D node also needs a collision shape. We will not be using a shape because I want this because each um, each uh, different enemy will have uh, varying radiuses and shapes and all that sort of stuff. So that's why we're not going to be using um, any shapes in this uh, scene right here. But this is the detect radius. This is basically uh, for the enemies to detect if our body has gone into their uh, like their area, their line of sight, and then they'll start to attack. So this is going to need a few things. We're going to be making a script. So let's get the script, detect radius script. We can just get rid of all of these. And let me just go ahead and type this out for you guys. So welcome back. This is all the things you're gonna need to put into the detect radius for uh, the most simplest version of it. For the most simplest version of it. So we have a variable called target. This is basically storing uh, the information of what entered the act, the uh, the radius, um, the shape itself? What entered that? That's just going to be stored in target. And then the can see player is what we're going to be calling on uh, the different uh, actual scripts of who has the detect radius. So the turret, that's we're going to be calling can see player in the turret script, rather the detect radius script, and that's basically just saying to itself like, okay, do we have uh, a target? Is it null? Is it actually filled up, etc. 
the uh, body entered function is a signal that is as is active as soon as someone enters the detect radius. And if it's at, if it doesn't have a target already, then we'll have the target be body. But if it does have a target, it will remain shooting at the pot at the body that entered first. So if there's uh, if a body entered, it's going to shoot at that one. If another body enters, it's not going to aim at that one. And the second one is basically if that body that entered left, then it will have no more targets. You can fiddle around with uh, these two. This is basic. This one's basically adding uh, a target to its body, or sorry, a body to its target. And then this one is just removing uh, that body from the target. So we're just gonna save this scene. Right. Uh, okay. Oh yes, save it. There we go. So we save that scene and then we want to select turret and we're going to instance the scene detect radius right there. And now it's now you see it's right in the middle. And last but not least, we're going to want a timer. And this one is going to be uh, timed for each shot. So this is going to be the time in between each shot because we don't want this thing to be a rapid, uh, a, and I mean rapid, fire minigun. We do not want that whatsoever, like at all. So that's why we have that. And now we're going to get a script for the turret. Now we have the turret. Yeah, that looks that looks good. All right. And I will be right back with what's going to be written in here. Welcome back. I have now written all the lines of coding that we will need for the uh, turret script. You can pause this video anytime you like. I would actually recommend it. But right up here, we have all of our variables set up. Um, this is our export variables. I've already talked about it. This is a signal. This is a custom one. Basically, it's the exact same thing that all these have where we click to the left, go to the node, and we have all of these signals. And you can even see the signal that we set up right there. We jump back to the script. The enum, I have not talked about this. It's a very interesting one. This is basically one where you can set up um, multiple different states and the variable will always equal what you set into it. It will never equal anything outside of it. And a lot of people use it for state machines and like weekdays, and, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, things like that. It, this, the one we're using right now is a state machine. You can see idle and attack. Then we have our variable set up and the variable we're also using for our state machine, we just set state. And then we also did on ready var so we can actually use the uh, shot timer and the detect radius. Then in our ready function, we're actually creating that circle with a radius. Um, for, uh, for the detect radius so we can actually use the turret. <coughs> Sorry about that. And then the physics process is actually uh, running the whole system. Basically, um, the idle state is, are we looking for the player? We'll actually expand more on the idle state later. And then the attack one, uh, that is basically uh, simple enough the turret shooting at whatever body entered the thing. And this is this is the seek player, this is what's in the idle, and this is what I was saying earlier, that it can see player. That's the function we're calling in detect radius. And you can do that by uh, calling the exact thing and doing dot can and then dot the function name with the parentheses as well. Don't forget that. And then once that's true, the state will become in attack mode. And then down here, the rest of this stuff is all the attack state. And you can see that we call it. So the attack is looking and it's going to 
the target that we have in this script will also equal the same target in the detect radius script. And then if it ever is null, it'll just go back to the idle state. But if it is if it is equal to something, we're going to go to the attack state, which is right down here. Oh, right down here. And this is basically um, going to move the line 2D that we have around in a circle until it is um, pointed at the body. And once it's very close to the body, it will then begin to shoot. And uh, that's what this function is doing down here. This uh, dot function right there, uh, that's basically just uh, math terms. And this, and if it comes out as 0.9, then it's uh, an acute angle. And then it will shoot. It will shoot the bullet. We do not have a bullet scene yet. So as of right now, I'm just doing a print and it's just going to say shot. So we know like, okay, it shot something. I have everything set up. I just don't have the bullet seen actually. So that we won't be doing that. We're just doing the print thing, which is, which is all right. So now we're getting our direction of it and we're going to emit the signal. We're going to emit the position, the direction. And right in here will also be the bullet scene itself. And then we're doing our shot timer. So then we can actually stagger the bullets. So it's not just all rapid fire. It goes do, 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 do. And we got to set that variable to can shoot equals false because we use it right here when it's true. So we can actually shoot the projectile. We got to equal it false. So it won't do that. And then once the timer runs out, it will then shoot again and it will stop the timer. And all those variables you see are up here with the export var right there. And those are, those are the numbers. And um, once we get the bullet scene though, we're going to need to go to level one and actually create a script for the level one node up top so we can actually put in the bullet scene. And now that we have uh, finished with the detect radius and the enemy, let's see how our work has done. So we are going to bring in the enemy turn scene. It's a very small guy. I should probably expand it a little more. I thought it'd be a little bigger, but I guess not. It is the same size as the player as well. Um, yes. So now you can see he's up there. He's just idling along, doing nothing. Huh. All right, well, I'll get back to you. I'll see what the problem is. Welcome back. I, and I actually found out what the problem was. Um, it's about the bit masks. All right, not the bit mask, but the collision layer and mask. Those things will be tweaked in the later episodes, and uh, we'll go into further detail on what they are. But an easy fix right now is to to for it to select its target just put body.getName equals player so it know so we know exactly which body is going to be actually detected and when we get that it will now work uh, i i still have no idea what is actually going on with the turret it's turned at a 90 degree angle but I will look into it and get back to you in a later episode. As of right now, uh, thank you for sticking around to this longer episode. Sorry for it. But uh, thank you for sticking around this far. If you have, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, comment down below. But this has been Ben Jam from Jam Studios. Thank you.